Wolfman, welcome to my second narrated submission grappling highlight around the world as I go with tons of pro fighters, like 16 to 18 pro fighters here, which is amazing to me, considering I'm in my late 30s at this point and a new brown belt and, you know, hate or do nothing, people go, oh, do those submissions, you know, rare submissions because they don't know it. They're like, oh, those must be white belts. And they're not white belts. Some are, and I'll tell you who, uh, but but a lot of people are really good pro fighters. You know, I've gone with pro, big, athletic, strong uh, guys for like 22 years, more than any other person, because I've traveled around the world and been on so many different fight teams and whatnot. So anyway, guys, I'm going to talk you through some of the rare submissions. I hope you enjoyed it. It's supposed to be a learning tool. That's what the boy, originally what this was intended for, was to leave behind some of the rare subs and whatnot that I do. The hey guy, guys, Stump, man. I hope you guys, Thank you for uh, like checking it. out my videos. Thanks. Go to thecombatsystem.com for all your mixed martial arts needs. And please subscribe to my YouTube page. Make sure to go to thecombatsystem.com and subscribe to my YouTube page. Me, and it was a good time. Thank you very much. Thank you for you. Thank um, for helping me. Uh, make sure to subscribe to this guy's uh, channel, Dan the Wolfman. Uh, you respect the game, and you know the game. You know what you're talking about, and uh, yeah, uh, he's pretty credible. Well, thank you, sir. And then you'll see me do the cradle hook, which uh, recently down here did a, a kind of a hidden video online about inside cradle. He hook. This isn't the finals in 2000. The third guy I submitted that day at heavyweight, even though I weighed under. Uh, under 205 or under 200. I think it was under 200. Uh, here's a star sweep. We'll do more of those later. Here, playing with a head scissor standing against the cage wall at um, Hart. Another one on the ground. Showing some catch wrestling. Catch it too, style. Hope you guys enjoy it. And here you'll see a flower sweep to an arm bar. This guy's got just a couple pro fights, I believe. Yeah, he's one of the main guys over there at Hearts. And here I'm rolling with Pancrase legend Kei Yamamiya. Like I said in another video. No, I can't just get beginners with it. Here's got him with a sucking choke. I don't want to be too rough with him because he's a very nice man. He's kind of kind of getting more banged up than even me. Um, so some some sucking chokes, and here I'm introducing him to the magic arm with toe hold. That is not just lockdown pressure because I'm big haters. You don't know what you're talking about. That's the magic arm with toe hold on Kiyamamiya. Very good fighter, very experienced, good wrestler. Been in pack race forever. Um. Emerald in with a guy who said he was, you know, been around the game a long time um, at uh, Tiger Muay Thai because he was a bigger guy and I needed bigger guys to go with. I said, just meet me on a Saturday when there was no classes or something at Tiger. Uh, and we went, there's another Magic Armless tool. And you'll see it again and again. Again, this guy at um, Sakurai's Dojo, I really don't know if he's a fighter or not. But I know this one upcoming is. In a second, this is an amateur fighter I was coaching and blue belt at the time. This is when I'm an early brown, basically. And um, one coming up, I believe, in a second. Magic, I think there's another one. Nope, oh, nope. Coming up next, this is uh, against a heavyweight uh, pro fighter. You will see me get him with a good old double wrist lock. What some people like to call a Kimura. Which wasn't called that when Kimura snapped Helio's arm. It wasn't until the late the 70s that a newspaper called, said the Kimurata. Most people don't know that. That's me and Ed Herman in the background. And I get him with a hip, uh, uh, neon belly hip crease reversal. It's the only cool thing I've ever pulled off against Ed Herman. Very good grappler, UFC veteran, tons of fights. Very good wrestler. Never took him down. There's Indian Deathlock. I think that was a purple belt, I believe. Um, Indian Deathlock. And this is just uh, my new student doing the same I think he was trying to be smart with some stuff so IDL Indian Deathlock and then off to the left here you see the footwork of the Indian Deathlock just kind of off screen but I included it because uh, he is a pro fighter fight, fights in the brave fights over there and I think a few deep fights at the time kill motion based uh, fighter um, here with that bigger guy again Let's see, I pass. And what am I going to do? Oh. 
Howdy. Dan Severn neck twist, the howdy choke position, but I hit him with the windshield wiper, I call that one. Windshield wiper neck crank. And mounting this guy. Oh, here. From martial arts, like Aikido and Dada Ruaku Jiu Jitsu and Wing Chun. I call it the pretzel twist. Japanese is Jujinagi. Sometimes I get the tap with it. And if I don't get the tap with it, as uh, another video I put out, and I think in number eight against the 36 year judoka, I switch it into a Juju Katami. So Jujinagi to Juju Katami armbar there. So he thinks it can hold me up. Now watch this. This is very invisible jujitsu system I hear. And that's an important concept I wanted people to learn. Top wrist lock. Here's some connection without there being connection. And I'll let you ponder that on your own. Watch this. Trying for the Nikyo variation or Ayadori, I think some ancient Japanese jiu-jitsu systems. Oh, right in the ten finger guillotine right there. Bam, fast. And time for a little electric chair stretch. He's saying, I can't do anything, but I won't touch. Because I haven't torched your knee yet, dude. Okay, you check the flexibility time. first. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, yeah, I can tap you, dude. So it's kind of funny. Um, this is the Mima heavyweight champion in Malaysia. You can should give him a private lesson. Uh, Darren Lowe, nice guy. And um, here's another electric chair. Now, this is a pro, um, Nakahara. He'll be fighting Gary Tonin coming up in one. This guy, this is at the pro training and Grabaka, but I don't really know. I think he's a pro. I don't really know. Um, and here, see a little calf slicer dual battle there that I'm going to win. Grab him the top of the toes. Did like a samurai roll. Here's some basic uh, leg lacing, I call that. Ashigurami. To the heel hook, slow down a bit, grabbing his other leg, getting the control. I'm just always very careful with heel hooks. This guy was a uh, had grappled before in the UK, but this is in Malaysia, so I, I, he was he was okay, strong guy. Some rag guard to leg hook guard here. Or a lot of people credit Sean Williams with that though. I think Nino Shemri may have done a lot of it first. To the double leg over position. To the double oh, wrist lock. Oh. Yeah, my leg's too heavy on the door back. Of course, you can just go in with the arm weave there and elbow crush and other things that I often do. I think here I uh, eventually just switch it to the yep, double wrist lock. Wow. Move my foot there. They posted that kills. Boom, leg over position. You know, we, most people can't roll out there if you keep heavy on the lower back. So sometimes it's high up when I first started with the legs. I think this is one of the first ever Japanese neck ties I hit and I got scared because I heard a pop. And I got short arms, so it's like my Japanese neck ties are kind of like Darcy. It's kind of Japanese neck ties. Here's a cross ankle lock, Sakuraba versus uh, Rich Style Pride 11. Cross ankle lock. In transition. This is a heavyweight deep fighter. Kodagaishi. Oh, word wrist twist. A 10 finger guillotine as he dropped his head down. Manages to scramble out of that. Again, in the top position of the half guard and right away hit him with the reverse toll. So another guy bigger than me. See who we got next. Oh, Bobby Olgan. I forgot to look him up. Bobby Olgan fought in like K1 and I don't know what other Japanese events. Well, a lot of Japanese TV shows and stuff. He had like a match against Boyce Gracie, I believe. Um, I, I forgot to lock him up before I filmed this video. But that's okay. Very big, ridiculously strong guy. Very explosive and was all about trying to control him and slow shit down so I don't get injured. It was all about not getting injured with him for the other partners that were there as well. The whole goal is not necessarily to tap and win. The whole goal with some people is do what you can without getting injured. 
Um, I think I did Chill Dog there. I forget. You guys, while I was talking to Uma Plata, either Lyco Guard or Chill Dog, not sure. Or both. To the Uma Plata here. This is back to that. Um, the, the amateur fighter I coached in Blue Belt in uh, Malaysia. Okay, good job, guys. Let's see. Okay, this is a uh, one fighter. The one in the back corner fought in the UFC named Tanaka. This guy might have been Tanaka as well that I'm going with. So I did rack guard. Now I'm setting blood coat guard to double leg over to Uma Plata. Looking for the Cruci Plata. Try to catch his arm here, but his short arms, I miss it. So kind of messed up a little bit there. Really, I kind of got the arm again. That's not really the position I want, that pinning tight position with the Cruci Plata. Um, so just pass on a side mount and kind of started taking his back. Looking, for, I think I looked for a drag back neck crank here. Um, here I'm going with Kenji Osawa. He's uh, been in the Japanese MMA scene a long time. He actually commentates a lot of events now. Uh, Owens Hearts Gym there, which if you speak, you want some English speakers. Kenji speaks good English. So if, if you're visiting Japan, um, you know, it might be a place to go. Chill Dog. Uma Plata, kind of counter, so I scramble off the top of the underhook here, Here, step over, can't quite get over his knee there, here's a veteran every organization in the world, UFC, Pride, um, Akihiro Gono, tries to cartwheel over, I stop him with feet and I go right to Chill Dog, I actually hurt my hip really bad the next day and that's done some damage to my hip, even though he's a lighter guy, kind of strange, but I just, just the way I countered with my legs there. I remember that injuring me a bit. So chill dog to Uma Plata. In this video, because it was the second one I put together, I wanted to put a lot of stuff from my back. Yes, obviously I have a better top game. More of that catch, heavy Carlson Gracie, heavy pressure style. But, you know, I can do pretty good on, on my back as well, usually. Now this guy, Yuki uh, Sasaki, 49 pro MMA fights. He was very good. I took him lightly and I just started him. Butterfly Guard, he passed him out at me and then I reversed him there with the armpit push. This is Oka Sasaki from the UFC and Ryzen. I just took him down with the Jack in the Box. If you don't know what that is, watch my amazing anti-cage uh, tactics video. Um, I think this is just a recreational guy I'm going with here. Yeah, I think it's just a recreational guy. Kind of samurai roll, going to the back, he turns, so I mount him. Put, I put anything that I think is cool, interesting transitions or subs, snap down right away to the gi team. And now in the gi, what I call the lapello team. Surprised everyone how quickly this was. Just got my grip, stuff your head in the hole, get in the armpit, and boom. Lapello team. I'm using the cross collar there. And this is one of my favorite um, chokes, lapel chokes, uh, that Fabio Schirner taught me. And it's very fast if you know how to use your elbow right on that artery there. Um, same hip crease reversal, KOB reversal I did to um, did Ed Herman earlier. This is a brown belt. You know, probably a recreational good, but a brown belt nonetheless. And um, my version of me teaching a long time how to armbar the guy but stay in top position, especially for MMA and street, so you don't maybe lose position and go to your back. There's no reason you gotta go to your back to get an armbar. Uh, look, I'm not sure who that was. It looks like that's the guy who had a couple pro fights, I think. I think he had amateur fights or pro fights. I think he had a few pro fights. Um, and probably has since then. Uh, so using the collar there to set up the uh, armbar. Jujikatami, a star sweep. Kind of gets out of it. Guys, most people don't know that star sweep. This is my best friend Ryan Bow. He's now in O'Gara, black belt. Here's arm barring 310 pound scary Jerry Pro Fighter. Was on, I, we both joined, I joined Team Punishment after that. was invited to join Team Punishment. Um, Tito's team, best, you know, when he was the best at the time. This is Pro Fight. That was uh, Jeremy Morrison. This is a triangle choke at a bar I bounced at in uh, Bettendorf for Davenport, Iowa when I was at MFS for 14 months. Straight Blast versus uh, Igor came in and challenged me. A friend of a Russian guy there. So this guy kind of wants to spar you, challenge you a little bit. Like, okay, you never know how hard he wants to go. Um, here's the real straight blast used in, in MMA. Only time in pro MMA anyway. Um, and first ever in MMA against Yuki Kondo there. Pancrase legend fought Tito for the UFC light heavyweight title. 
So the Daito Juko headquarters, some straight blasting action, straight blasting of the armbar, or taking care of it on the street. Blasting and trapping in the guard to the special two on two heel hook. This is years ago, and now you have seen people do that in, uh, like Liz Carmouche attempted that in GBI, remember? Some good old fashioned kidney kicks. Just kind of put some stuff here at the end to remind you of realities of of grappling when strikes are involved. Against Yuki Kondo, who's beat just tons of great guys uh, before his body kind of aged too much on him. His mind was starting to, unfortunately. Doing some sliding sidekicks, you know, back, I think this was 97. Yeah, 90, 1997, when people thought you couldn't kick and definitely not kick above the belt. But I just kicked him in the chin. No one thought you could kick above the belt until like 2005. Like, uh, and I just front kicked him in the chin way before Anderson Silva uh, did it in uh, seven. Star Sweep, guys. And once Star Sweep, the UFC heavyweight champion, put him on his back. That's a true story. Hope you enjoyed Hope it. Hope you guys enjoyed it.